Through three weeks this season, we've seen 168 touchdown passes, the most in the modern history of the NFL. It's enough to give a Hall of Fame quarterback an ear-to-ear -ear grin as we welcome back Kurt Warner with his top five quarterbacks from week number three. Who we got, Kurt? Well, it gives me a big grin, Scott, but it makes my job harder to pick yeah, a top five because yeah. everybody's throwing touchdowns. But uh, let's get into it. Number five, he's dropped a little bit, which I guess is to be expected because he was tearing it up the first couple weeks of the season. And that's Patrick Mahomes with only three touchdowns. Eli Manning, I thought, played an unbelievable game, accurate with the football, made good decisions. He's at number four. Jared Goff is having a great start to the season, not only for his team, but personally as well. Number two, Number three, uh, number two, you got Matt Ryan who threw five touchdown passes uh, and for a bunch of yards probably would have been number one if they'd have pulled that game out. Yeah. But they didn't, and it was because the guy that's at number one threw for nearly 400 yards and nearly 40 completions and had an unbelievable game to set the all-time record for completions last week, and yeah. that's Drew Brees. Drew Brees, number one, he had five total touchdowns in that game. All right, when we got your list in advance of the beginning of the show, Everyone looked at it and said, what did Ben Roethlisberger do to offend Kurt Warner? Big Ben went for 350 <laughs> I, and three touchdowns, man. Well, he did, but they didn't score a point in the second half. Yeah, I mean, that's true. This is about a, 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 <laughs> a complete performance. It's not just the stat line. So, you know, he probably would have been up there after the first half. I'm thinking, man, 30 points, here he goes. But they didn't do anything in the second half, so it's hard to put him on the top five. All right, and you said it, it was difficult to do because everyone's getting in the end zone these days in chunks. Uh, I see number three, Jared Goff right there. He's playing on Thursday night football. He's quarterbacking what some people think might be the best team in the NFL right now. Break him down a little bit for me, would you? I will. My records aren't safe, that's for sure, with the way that he's playing. But he's in just such command of what they're doing. He's got weapons all around him. And here's an example right here. He knows the safety's favoring the left-hand side. He's got pressure, so he's got to deal with one guy. But watch how he manipulates this one defender. He's got a skinny post on the backside. So he's going to sit back here, hold the safety front side, then work the defender on the backside and drops this dime right in on Brandon and Cooks behind him for what was a near touchdown in that particular look here we've got a little deep hook with an out here and I love this is that he reads the, the outside defender who pulls down on the hook but then watch the throw not only does he have a guy coming in his face in this particular case but the defenders breaking from the inside puts the ball to the outside perfect placement on the football once again great control and then he doesn't get enough credit for what he can do inside the pocket. His ability to manipulate the pocket was one of my favorite things about him coming out. And you see Cooper Cup there uh, running the underneath route. He's trying to throw this over the top to the big throw, but pressure breaks, uh, you know, comes in his face. He manipulates the pocket here, buys time, keeps his eyes down the field. And once again, a strike on the second level to Cooper Cup. Gets a little help from his friends, and uh, they find themselves in the end zone again. And playing this week in a game that some people think could be an NFC title game preview or maybe a couple of uh, future playoff teams head-to-head -head Thursday night football right here on NFL Network, Rams and Vikings. Ready to see the fans' top five list here, Kurt? <laughs> Let's see. Where, oh, there he always, is. Always, always. There he is, Big Ben at number five. And then 4-3-2-1, uh, uh, okay. all guys that you had in your top five. So the only discrepancy the fans had, they put Ben in and they put Eli out. Your thoughts? Well, again, I mean, I like the list. I'm not going to argue with Ben. You said the numbers earlier. Like I said, left him off just because there wasn't a big second half there in that game. And it's always nice if you're a quarterback and you throw a 15-yard pass to a tight end who throws an epic stiff arm and then goes for the rest of the 75 yards that you get on the stat line. 